Hey everyone and welcome back. So what we just created not too long ago was this dragging type of prototype and let's just go in to take another look on what that came out to look like. Now we just were focusing on, you know, creating these nice little transitions between images in like a gallery for a home and this looked really nice and I think we were all pretty happy with how this turned out. Now that's one way to kind of employ dragging, but when I'm thinking about like how these work within a mobile screen, I'm also thinking about another way that you drag as a user. You can even call it scrolling, but this is more so dragging or swiping. So I have a couple of different items over here on the right side and I'm gonna actually create a dragging listing type of prototype and we're actually not gonna even need to, you know, scroll through anything per se or connect anything per se. So we're actually just gonna jump right in. So if we look up here, we can see that we have a search container that I put together. Really easy, I can break down right now how I created it. So I did create a frame and inside the frame I have my regular search icon. So I got that search icon once again using the material design icons plugin, which is super helpful for just throwing icons and designs really quickly. I also went ahead and just threw some text in there. I have it set to fill container. I also have this set to just kind of fixed. So they're going to sit together in this auto layout container that is housing everything. So it does have the fill and it does show you that it's only going to be eight pixels in between items within. So that's perfect. And this is going to be set to left and right. So this isn't an auto layout container. This is just a regular container that we have here. So we're just going to leave that as is. And below here we have the save search button, which is also in a frame. If you notice, I like using frames because it does keep things together. So we have the save search text and the bookmark icon and same thing for the other ones, sort and filter. So I just put these together to make things look really nice. And we're just going to place that in there. Oops, it didn't actually get put in there. Let's uh, back up a bit. So I'm going to just place that there we go. Now we are inside the frame. Okay, and we'll move that right to the very top. If you notice, I do have an outline on it. That is the stroke over here. So I just have a 5% stroke. It's one pixels in terms of the width of the stroke. So it's one pixel. That's just going to be there at the top. And then I have my nav. So, I mean, we've built navs quite a bit already. And navs, they're pretty easy to create, to be honest. All you need are icons. Like I said, utilize material design icons for your designs, because that's gonna really, really help you. I'm just cleaning up over here on the side so I can see exactly what I am working with. So we have that, perfect. And that is set up with auto layout once again. So I have auto layout here, you'll see auto and mix, and that's because there's space in between. I have 40 pixels on the left side. I have 40 pixels on the right side and 12 pixels on the top and 28 pixels on the bottom. And if we go into each individual nav item, I do have them also set up with auto layout once again. So this frame has the text below and it has the icon. And if you look at the difference between this frame and you know the, the container housing everything, this is set to you know do rows from top to bottom and this one is set to columns from left to right or right to left, whichever way. So that is perfect. It's looking good. And now we have our listings. So this is basically the same design that we created over here. The only difference that we have here is that we don't have multiple images. We just have one image. So we're not worried about right now, at least creating like a dragging slideshow or anything like that. We're just going to keep these together like that because that's not what we're animating. So here we go. We have the main listing 
frame and we're going to drag that into here and i find that the best way to kind of place it i'm going to turn on my grid this is an auto layout frame that's housing all of these different cards you can see that they're spaced by 16 pixels and the cards themselves if i select them all so i'm going to do command a or control a if you set them to fill the container now we can shrink them as such and this is why i like to kind of use fill container and you know use fill container even for these smaller pieces so you'll notice that i haven't even really changed anything here i've basically just kept the content the same aside from the imagery. So when you're actually working on a product, it's good to, you know, not actually keep the content the same. We want to diversify it a bit, make it seem more lifelike. So we're just going to send that one to the back. So that's what it's like in the back. And we'll push that to the very top there. Perfect. Okay. What we're going to do here is we are just going to get this started. And the problem with this is here, I will show you, we're going to actually start a flow here and we're just going to call this one listing. Now you already have these designs ready to go. I am going to actually just teach you how to kind of build this like I have and layer some of your layers properly for actual prototypes. So one thing we haven't done here is we haven't selected a device and we are going to go with the pro. I think that's going to work out beautifully. And so let's press play. We're not interested in that one. We're interested in this one. So you notice that we have an issue here. So everything's working pretty much as expected, except this won't move up no matter what I do. And I will teach you how to fix that. So this is perfect because we'll set this to a fixed position at the top. So it's not going to actually move. This one we can set to a fixed position at the bottom. So there's two ways we can do this. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So the easy way, we can just go like this. And that is going to stretch perfectly. So we'll just leave it like that. And that's the first option that we can do. So this is so I would call this a normal scroll. And we'll just call this a secondary scroll. I mean, you can do either or totally. It's honestly really easy and you don't really need to worry about how that kind of looks, but it's going to be perfect. So we'll just do vertical scrolling within this container, which is perfect. So as you can tell, there's one main difference. And the main difference is we can either have our whole screen extend out and then set these as fixed. Or you can keep the screen as it's supposed to be, which is 812 pixels for the iPhone 11 and shorten this container and put vertical scrolling. And when you have an auto layout container like this, you can just keep on adding cards like so over and over again. So you don't even need to worry about, you know, seeing those cards. So I'll show you what that looks like. So, so this is what it's going to look like. And you can really, you know, simulate what it's going to feel like, even with a little bit of a bounce. So this is really nice. If you want to showcase to your dev team, how these different types of elements work together, you know, staying fixed to the top and fixed to the bottom while the user scrolls between different types of listings. Or you can do it this way. And this way is still kind of not working properly. What you would do in this case 
Let's see if we can get that to work. There we go. See, it still performs as expected. So totally up to you. If you're looking to really clean up your designs, then you probably wanna go this route. But if you wanna just make sure that you can see all the content that's scrollable, then you can just extend the height of your mobile screen or your desktop screen to see everything which is really helpful for you know visualizing all these different listings but remember if you're going to do that turn the overflow scrolling off on this type of container set this container to fixed over here so fixed position when scrolling and same thing over here fixed position when scrolling these ones don't actually need it because you have it set to the actual height of the screen. So you can see it on this prototype again, that they're just going to work no matter what. And that's how you create this kind of dragging, swiping movement and interaction within a mobile screen when you're trying to work with longer screens. And the same kind of works for desktop as well, but that's more of a scrolling interaction. So. This is kind of how you set up your different elements.